today we've got a really cool problem from the 1989 Putnam, and it's problem number A4. So if you know anything about the Putnam, you know that there's a morning session and an afternoon session. And the morning problems are numbered A1 to A6, and then B1 to B6 for the afternoon session. And generally, the problem writers or the exam writers try to set it up so that A1 is the easiest, and then A2, and so on and so forth. That means that A4 should be one of the maybe middle to harder problems on the exam. So let's see if that's the case here, if this is really as tricky as it might seem like it is by the fact that it's an A4 problem. Okay, so let's suppose we've got a number alpha. That number is between zero and one exclusively, and it's irrational. And then what our goal is, is to describe a finite game that you play with a fair coin so that the probability of winning is exactly alpha. So here's like the general idea of how to get started. And I think maybe if you think about it and the fact that you've got a number here, alpha, and you're playing with a coin, you know, you would arrive at this idea fairly logically, and that is we want to build some sort of number from successive coin flips. So, for instance, if you were to flip heads and then tails and tails and heads and heads and heads and maybe stop right there, what number would that correspond to? And, well, just to keep it kind of in line with what we have over here, perhaps it should be a number between 0 and 1. So I think maybe logically we would set this number or have this, you know, set of successive coin flips be associated to 0 0.100111. So, in other words, a coin flip of a head gives us a 1 and a coin flip of a tail gives us 0. I guess you could do the opposite of that as well, but we might as well go with this. But notice that this number is not really able to give us any number between 0 and 1 unless we use a base system that is different from base 10. Notice that the biggest this number can be if we're working base 10 is 0 0.11111111 repeating but we want any number between zero and one. So that means we need to view this in base two. So let's maybe do that down here to like get us started. So let's say this is the start of our solution. So let's write alpha, which you know, that's gonna be a number between zero and one, like we're assuming in its base two expansion. So that means we can write alpha as 0 0.A1, A2, A3, so on and so forth. In other words, this is going to be A1 over 2 plus A2 over 4 plus A3 over 8, and so on and so forth. And I guess it's important to point out here that all of the AIs come from the set between 0 and 1. And then, well, how does irrationality fit into this? So, well, let's talk about that because that's actually going to be, you know, a little bit important to what's going on here. So, irrational means that this sequence AN, or maybe we'll say the sequence AK as K goes from 1 to infinity, is non-repeating and non-terminating. So, non-repeating and non-terminating. That's maybe one of the kind of first, you know, definitions or equivalent formulations of the irrationality that you learn. That's actually pretty important because the non-repeating means that you can't end in just a string of ones. And it's important in this setup that we can't end in a string of ones because uh, ending in a string of ones is equivalent to, well, it's equivalent to the following. Let's maybe uh, just do it by example. Let's say we have 0 0.00111111 and so on and so forth forever and ever and ever. Well, that turns out to be equal to 0 0.01. Maybe let's put a 2 down here just to point out here that we are working base 2. 
And uh, you can see that simply by looking at a geometric series. That being said, this is like very, very similar to the fact that 0 0.99999 and so on and so forth is equal to one. Okay, so now we've got our setup, like our first start. And this idea of how to build a number from successive coin flips. Now let's see where the solution would go from here. All right, we've got our setup. Now we're ready to really dive into the meat of this solution. And I want to introduce the following notation. And that notation goes like this. And this is like non-standard just for this problem. So let's set maybe AI bar equal to zero if AI is equal to one and one if AI is equal to zero. So in other words, it's the opposite of zero or one, keeping in mind that we've got this base two expansion. So now let's see what's going on with this first flip, or actually before we talk about what's going on with this first flip, let's talk about what our win condition is. And that is we win if the number we produce by the flips is ever less than alpha, and that's strictly less than alpha. Okay, so now that we've got our win condition sorted out, let's see what's happening at each flip. And I guess I should point out here that we're using the fact that alpha is this 0 0.0, A1, A2, A3, and so on and so forth. So let's maybe bring that up here so we don't forget it, because that's gonna be important to keep. Because <laughs> that's gonna be important to keep in mind. So we have alpha is equal to 0 0.A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, so on and so forth, base two. In other words, it's the sum as maybe, yeah, let's say K goes from one to infinity of A sub K over two to the K, where A sub K is a number between zero and one, and that sequence is non-terminating and non-repeating, uh, like we said before, because we have an irrational number. Okay, so now that we've got that taken care of, okay, so let's see what's going on with the first flip. And if we understand what's going on with the first flip, then it's pretty easy to get some sort of idea with what's going on with maybe an arbitrary flip. And well, this flip is gonna split into two cases, and those cases are going to depend on if a1 is one or it's zero. In other words, if this number right here, this first digit is zero or one. So let's say here we've got a1 is one, and here we have a1 is equal to zero. But, you know, like I just alluded to, these two are gonna split into two cases as well. So let's maybe put those cases right here and right here, and then this is also gonna split into two bubbles. So let's split those in, into two bubbles as well. Okay, so if the first flip is A1 and we flip a one, in other words, we flip a heads, then that means that the number that we've built so far is equal to alpha. But if it's equal to alpha, then it still has the possibility to be less than alpha in successive rounds. So that means that we're gonna go to the next round. So like I said, if A1 is one and we flip a one or a heads, then we go to the next round. And what's the probability for that? Well, the probability is pretty clearly equal to a half. You might say, well, there are four outcomes here, but there are really only two outcomes. It's just that there's two cases. There are, there's this case right here, whereas if A1 is one, there's this case down here, which is independent, which is when A1 is zero. Okay, so now what happens if we flip a zero? Well, if we flip a zero, then that means the number that we've built is smaller than alpha. But if it's smaller than alpha, then we win. So we flip a zero, we get a winning condition, and that winning condition comes with a probability of one half. Okay, cool. But now, well, let's observe that P equals a half in both of these cases is equal to what? 
Well, it's going to be equal to a1 over 2. But now look, that means that the probability of winning, which is a half, can be written in terms of this number a1. The probability of winning is exactly a1 over 2. Now let's go down here to the case when a1 is 0. So if we flip a 1, then that means that our number is larger than alpha, and it can never get smaller than alpha with successive flips. So that means we are going to lose. But if we lose, well, that's a probability of a half as well. That's because we could either flip 1 or 0, heads or tails. Okay. Then what if we flip a tails, which is the same thing as flipping zero? Well, that means that our flip matches exactly the a1 equals zero, but that means we're gonna go to the next round. And the probability of going to the next round is a half, just you know, like we had with these other cases as well. But the important thing to take out of this second case when a1 is equal to zero is that the probability of winning in this case is equal to zero. Because look, we don't win if we flip a heads or a tails. We cannot win in the first round if a1 is equal to zero. But notice that the probability of winning being zero, oh, that's gonna be the same thing as is a1 over two, because zero over two is zero. And now, well, the big takeaway here is that the probability of winning in the first flip is, well, notice that it's a1 over 2. It's 0 over 2 in the case that this first flip is 0. It's 1 over 2 in the case that the first flip is 1. It's 0 over 2 if this first digit is 0, and it's 1 over 2 if the first digit is 1. But let's say that we don't know exactly what that first digit is, then we have this nice summary of the probability of winning in the first flip under this game that we've constructed is a1 over 2. So now let's maybe keep that in mind as we move on to successive rounds. Okay, so, well, what did we see already? We saw that the probability of winning our game in the first round was a1 over 2. Now let's look at the probability of winning in the second round, and once we understand this, we definitely understand what's going on in general. Notice the probability of winning in the second round is the probability of getting to the second round. We have to get to the second round to win in the second round times the probability of winning once we are in the second round. Well, let's observe that the probability of getting to the second round, that's actually pretty easy to calculate because if we saw in both of those cases that we had on the board before, the probability of moving on to the next round was always one half. So that means that this number is always one half. The probability of getting to the second round is always one half. Then the probability of winning once we're in the second round, well, that's gonna be essentially the same sort of argument that we had for the probability of winning in the first round, which is gonna give us a two over two. So putting that together, we have a2 over 4, in other words, a2 over 2 squared. But now, well, we can generalize this to the probability of winning in the kth round, which, well, we'll have to do the same sort of calculation, the probability of getting to the kth round. But that's easy to calculate because the probability of moving through each round is one half but we've got to move through k minus one rounds to get to the kth round. So the probability of just getting there is gonna be one over two to the k minus one. And then times the probability of winning in that kth round once we're already there is essentially the same thing as we had right here. And for this bit right here, it's gonna be a k over two. Putting this all together, we have a k over two to the k. And now, well, the end of this problem is in sight. So let's see what we need to do to finish this thing off. Okay, well, we just finished arguing that the probability of winning in the kth round was a k over two to the k. And now, well, let's see what the probability of an overall win is. So that's gonna be the probability of win in round one plus the probability of a win in round two, 
plus a probability of win in round three, plus the probability of a win in round four, and so on and so forth. In other words, it's going to be the sum as k goes from one to infinity of the probability of winning in the kth round. But we just argued that the probability of winning in the kth round was a k over two to the k, meaning that we're simply summing from one to infinity of a k over two to the k. But check it out, that's exactly our number alpha. But that means the probability of winning our game is exactly our number alpha, which is exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to describe a game that had this as the probability of winning.